In the workshop, a Cotswold Heritage Atlas steam plant. This is part eight, assembling the turret, making the live steam piping and fitting the displacement lubricator. After the silver soldering process in the last episode, I cleaned up the turret. And here you see it sat on the baseboard. I'm not going to paint this turret. I want it to match the brass work on the boiler. So I think it should look okay. But I do need to make some more parts for it yet. I've made some blanking plugs to fit in each end of the crossbar but I need to finish them off and the best way to do this is to screw them into a union nut clamped in the three jaw chuck. This lathe tool is a round nose tool that I modify to suit the job that I'm doing. I keep grinding bits off it and in this case as you can see it makes a nice dome on the end of a brass nut. Frequently, when I go up to Blackgates Engineering, I will pick up another one of these lathe tools. They're not very expensive, and they're actually cranked at the wrong side. For instance, this tool is designed to cut from the left, not the right. And this is good for the video, because the tool post doesn't get in the way on these close-up shots. So this is the second nut having the modified round nose tool treatment. And that's it for the round nose tool. It's time to fit a standard lathe tool in the tool post. And with this, I take a facing cut across the front of the nut, just to flatten it off a bit. And then without moving anything other than taking the nut out of the chuck and fitting the other one, I repeat the process for the other nut. I also modified a commercial double union. This is the main steam inlet that fits at the back of the turret. I always use this Loctite 542 hydraulic seal on the threads of steam parts, and that way they do not leak. These Loctite products are really good. This of course is just the hydraulic seal, not a retainer. And the first thing that it does is lubricates the thread so as you tighten the fitting, it goes in very smoothly. And once it sets, it seals the thread and it doesn't leak. It's a very strange phenomenon that often when I have the camera on an operation, it doesn't go well. Either the nut doesn't fit in the hole or it falls on the floor. Here is the completed turret. Both of the steam valves are in place, the blanking plugs are in each end, and the excellent microcosm steam siren is fitted to the top of the turret. Here's work in progress so far, and I think it's going to look really good. The siren and the turret match the brass work on the boiler. I removed the siren fitting and applied some Loctite 542 where it goes into the turret. The fitting has an O-ring at the top, so I don't need to put any 542 on the top thread. So that's the turret out of the way, now it's fun time. Piping the boiler to the turret to the engine. I'm using my middle size pipe bender, I have three, a microcosm one which is tiny, a very large one, and this one which is just right. And that sounded like it came directly from Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And if you don't know what that is, it's a children's story about eating porridge in a very dangerous environment. Time for the piping, here's a good tip before using any piping like this that you've just cut on a bandsaw or with a hacksaw or whatever, clean off the sharp edges before you put it anywhere near the baseboard, as it would not be good to scratch the baseboard at this stage. Once I bent the pipe to length, I soldered some union cones on the end, not forgetting to put the union nuts on first, and now, with mounting excitement, I'm going to modify the T-piece. I need to make it so that the displacement lubricator screws into one end of it. I fitted a union nut to one end of the T-piece using some Loctite 542 and here I'm drilling through the union nut and down into the fitting and I'm threading the hole 3 sixteenths by 40 threads per inch. And once I'd done that, I screwed the fitting into the nut that's in the lathe and here I'm very carefully turning down the end of the nut so basically it's no longer a union nut, it's just a plain nut. All I need to do now, and once again, Loctite 542 is the order of the day, is put some of this stuff on the thread on the lubricator and screw it into the T-piece. I'm not sure if I'm going to need to use a shim washer, so I'll give it a try and see what happens, you never know. Obviously the T-piece needs to be the right way around. And as it turns out, in this instance I was lucky, it fitted perfectly. So now I can fit the entire lubricator complete with its T-piece into the piping network. And it occurs to me, as I'm fitting this lubricator in this position, that it's going to need some kind of physical support. And I'll show what I'm going to do to the lubricator by way of support when I actually do the job. 
The displacement lubricator is fitted to the T-piece, the T-piece is fitted to the piping, so I think it's time to test the system to make sure it doesn't leak. But with 542 everywhere where it may leak, I don't think it's going to. I'm temporarily attaching an airline. I'm just using some silicone rubber tubing and some cable ties. By opening the valve on the compressor, I'm pumping the boiler up to around 60 pounds per square inch. So far so good. I'll see if the engine works. Yes it does, and it seems to sound a lot better by being piped to the condenser and up the chimney. And that's it for this episode. I'll stop talking so you can listen to the engine working. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.